the urban legend about you Berlin people, whoever and wherever you may be and wherever you may be coming from, is that you know everything, you have read everything, you're on top of everything, and you're the coolest cats out there. So God knows what I can offer you to justify the fact that you're given up the beginning of a super brilliant Berlin night to be here to digest some theory. Thank you for taking the time, and I hope it will be at least be a little bit, um, uh, if not inspiring, that it may keep you uh, awake. I was asked to address the nomadism issue because of the errands project. And when I first um, read it, instead of errands, I actually detected errands with a D. Um, and it got me thinking about the, one, of the, one of my concerns, anyway, which is the connection between advanced capitalism, shopping, and mobility, uh, which is one of the possible, and uh, probably one of the most plausible definitions of nomadism. By the time I realized that it actually was about errands, very erudite, and you Berliners know everything, see my point before, uh, I, I had already launched my reflections on my lifelong engagements with um, trying to understand how this amazing system that we're living in actually functions, and how advanced capitalism errands with its coercive and compulsory patterns of repetition and mobility errands actually keeps us going. You have to give it to this. It really is a beastly system. And that got me thinking on the dawn of a very big birthday that I celebrated with Panache um, about uh, a week ago. It got me thinking of how I started with nomadism at all, and I can't even remember how it started. I think nomadism started with me rather than my starting with it. And I haven't been able to shake it off. Um, even the posthuman is in fact a sort of a footnote to my reflections on what does it mean to be a non-unitary subject in a system which makes you non-unitary because capitalism as schizophrenia splits you over and over again. So who's the real nomad here and how we do, do we differentiate between different forms of nomadism? Not only is Nomadism a book in 91, which becomes books in 94, it becomes a trilogy, and then all of this was done blissfully in the years when Deleuze was not fashionable. Nobody knew him from a bar of soap. I'm beginning to miss those years. And when the Deleuze were like 21 and a half people, the three standard feminists, we could meet at conferences, make sense. It was lovely. All of a sudden, Deleuze is popular out of nowhere unprompted by any institutional backing, unsolicited by any career motives, unsupported until recently by any institutional journals, comes the Deleuze wave, and enough to make the Deridians have a fit. Are we recording this? We are. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the fact that my nomadism project gets caught in the new Deleuzean wave means that my publisher in 2010, calls me up and says, you have to rewrite the book. And I said, excuse me, you have to rewrite the book. So it's not a second edition, it's a new book. I'm the only person I know who's written the same book twice, um, <laughs> with the same title, with the same contract. Um, and the difference between the 1994 and the 2011 edition is in 1994, we were speaking in the wild, there were three of us, and by 2011, everybody's on to some sort of monism, some sort of new materialism, some sort of flat ontology, some sort of Spinozist uh, politics. And I'm fascinated by the absolute time disjunctions, the, the perverse temporalities of trying to be a feminist Deleuzeans uh, in the middle of what for 20 years was pretty much the hegemony of a linguistic turn type of post-structuralism. And you can't really get past the, the Lacanians, lovely people, the Deridians, <laughs> some of my best friends, <laughs> uh, but, but there is there a linguistic frame, a matrix of power that is dramatically different from the Spinozism, the Monism of the Deleuzean front. And so to, to sort of be used to arguing against a linguistic turn when from one day to the other nobody even knows who Lacan is, is quite extraordinary. I find it an extraordinary lesson on the peculiar geographies and the perverse temporalities of the life of ideas.